welcome back to another episode of More Than Kurosawa. And this week, we're going to be looking at the film Secret Sunshine, directed by Lee Chang Dong. This is just the second episode of the series, so everyone is new. I talked about my philosophy for doing the series just last week, but just to give you another reminder, essentially what we're going to be doing for the next few months is uh, celebrating and exploring the great world of Asian cinema, reviewing a new movie every single week, really celebrating a new movie every single week. It's going to be a movie that I love or really appreciate. And we're going to do a new movie every week by a new director every single week. So we're not going to cover another Li Chang Dong movie or another Hirokazu Koreeda movie. Trying to keep things a little bit more niche or new. I'm not going to cover directors like Bong Joon-ho or Hayao Miyazaki, who are well-known, who many people have already seen their movies. The thinking behind this series is that we've all sort of been introduced to Asian cinema through some of those modern directors or through an Akira Kurosawa. But guess what? There's more than Kurosawa out there. And I want to highlight old masters, but also uh, young directors that are working today from multiple different genres from many different countries uh, throughout Asia. I'm really excited about what the series can be. We're still discovering the structure of the series, but essentially I want to talk about the director at the top, give us a little bit of understanding and context of what makes them special and why you should explore more of their movies than just the, mo the movie we cover on this episode. And then in the second half of the video, particularly discussing my thoughts on the film, why I think it's an important movie, why I think it's worth watching without spoiling it and giving you um, a, a kind of a weekly recommendation, I guess, through this series. If you enjoy these videos, feel free to uh, like the video or subscribe. Subscribing to the channel always helps and, and support the channel. And if you want to leave your comments, feel free to do that as well. If you've seen the movie, if you're excited to see it, all that stuff, I'd love to hear as well. But without further ado, jumping into the first part of this video, just discussing why I chose Lee Chang Dung as the director to cover in this series. And I wanted to include him early on, kind of as a sister episode with Hirokazu Kurieda on last week's episode, because they're both uh, older directors but are still making great movies today. Uh, Lee Chang Dung's last movie was Burning with Steven Yun, who you may have seen was in the awards conversation during that year and was a well critically acclaimed film. And he's a director that I was introduced in 2018 and then was kind of really impressed by Burning so that I went back and, and watched a lot of his other movies, which excited me so much about uh, his next film, which is yet to come out. Uh, but I still wanted to cover him on this series because I think he's made multiple uh, excellent movies and has a distinctive voice. There are very few filmmakers like Lee Chang Dong and very few films like his movies, at least from what I've seen. And if I were to give him an uh, American kind of Western comparison, I'd compare him to a director like Michael Mann, in that his distinctive auteur style is actually not necessarily through his photography, it's actually more so through his writing. So a director like Wes Anderson, you put up a frame, his visual style is so distinctive, you know it's a Wes Anderson movie. Lee Chang Dong, I don't think he is exactly like that, but when you kind of see the story and what he's interested in and kind of repeated themes, you do see a pattern. And similar to a, a, someone like a Michael Mann, Li Chang Dong's characters in many instances are reserved. They're psychologically complex. They don't give you the clear understanding and picture right away. And I think as a result, that makes them more interesting. So you may hear that and go, oh, reserved, unclear, kind of confusing. You, you may be going, oh, that's kind of boring or maybe challenging. And it is, in some instances, a challenging experience, but it's not necessarily an unentertaining un experience. In many ways, I think it's even more entertaining because he leans into the mysteriousness of his movies. If you think of some of his movies, he's always jumping and jumping into and throwing you into the middle of a story. In Burning, you see a man reconnect with a woman who he's known in the past. We don't know their past relationship. We just know that they're meeting right now. And we're trying to discover what that past relationship is. So we don't know, is the scene supposed to be awkward or weird or passionate? It's hard to tell until, especially in that movie, very later on. In this movie uh, that I'm going to be covering today, in Secret Sunshine, we're jumping to the middle of a story. A woman's moving towns, her husband just died. We don't know their relationship in the past. We're just kind of 
jumping into a new story, a transition point into her life. Same thing with um, poetry, uh, one of his other films, where we're jumping into someone learning that essentially they have an Alzheimer's diagnosis. And we don't know how late they are into the progress. We just know that they're in this transitionary point. And I think that makes the stories very exciting because we're unsure of how to ca categorize the person. And in many Hollywood movies, that's exactly what we're trying to do. In many ways, the Hollywood filmmakers are trying to help you categorize it because, hey, we only got two hours to tell and we have this huge story to, to, to go through, so let's do some quick characterizations to help you understand and, and almost get, get past that um, element. So in Hollywood movies, you'll get a piece of dialogue that says, well, ever since his dad died, he hasn't really been the same. There you go, that's a very efficient, clean way of telling us that, okay, he's sad right now, his dad died relatively recently, uh, he was probably presum presumptively happy before that instance, and now that's where the story starts. It's why we see so many stereotypes, I think, in traditional Hollywood blockbusters, the jock, the nerd, the hero, because it helps us audiences um, categorize people. Okay, this is the hero of the story, he's a nerd, he's getting picked on, he's gonna have to overcome that to some in some sort of hero's journey kind of, of a way. And that, I think, works well for those movies, but Li Chang Dong's films are almost less interested in telling this grand story, they find the story of the person themselves being interesting, and in the character piece itself being interesting. You don't know if they're good or bad or what you necessarily need to think about them. And as a result, there's an element of mysteriousness. And I think, as a result, engagement. Because I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to read what this person is thinking or who they are or what's their relationship with other people. It keeps me engaged so that I'm always kind of on edge until we get to the midpoint or, or closer to the end where we start to reveal things about the character. And because I'm so emotionally invested, because I've been trying to figure out kind of who they are, I've been trying to categorize them and I can't really... I become so much more emotionally invested in their journey and I think creates a more complex human uh, drama that uh, Cheng Dong does so well. And he's got such a control of that craft and such patience in that and he's not worried about you understanding everything right away, which you will see in a lot of times with Asian films or really just international cinema in general. They're not rushing to tell you how to think about things. They let things kind of eventually unravel, which... For some people, I understand it can be somewhat of a frustrating experience, although I do still recommend this movie and recommend yourself to, to try to be challenged because I think the more you engage with this movie, the more you get out of it. And I was very engaged, so I, I definitely got a, a lot out of it. So now transitioning more so into my thoughts and, and a bit of a discussion on the film. The movie is about a mother and a son who are moving to the town where their recently deceased uh, man, father, husband, he grew up and the rest of the film is the two of them trying to get, keep their head afloat and navigate moving to a new city and some of the different dynamics in the town. And the reading of that and the kind of synopsis of it, I kept it relatively vague because I don't want to spoil things. It sounds like it's kind of a inspirational movie or a you know new family starting new girl in the big city kind of a situation or you know starting their own little shop and it kind of is for the first little bit um, but it kind of evolves from there and the movie is a classic Chang Dong movie in that it's mysterious of its characters you don't know where things are going to go which I think is a testament to his storytelling he always keeps you engaged you don't know where the story will lead but it really is also so much of the success on the shoulders of Chun Do Yun and her lead performance. It really is a, a tour de force performance by her. She is in every frame, pretty much. It truly is a, a leading performance. And she communicates so much doubt and optimism of that move and then of how people perceive her and then how certain events shape her life and how she kind of evolves throughout uh, the film in different kind of groups, I guess you would say, she associates herself with after certain events. And there's a, just one of the best pieces of acting I've ever seen, without spoiling anything, in the midpoint of the film, the best, the height of the film in many ways, there's a scene in a jail, 
and you get sort of just a single kind of not even a close-up a medium and you just see that the life and that kind of optimism and hope drain from her face in real time and it's just this brilliant piece of, of almost trick acting in that you can literally see the emotions change in this beautiful subtle way and it is so rewarding of how the script has kind of set things up to lead to that moment and that kind of revelation so much of the success of the film is to do with that amazing performance and is a reason why you watch the movie in the same reason you know tar is a great movie it's from a great filmmaker with a great script but in many ways, the success of the movie is hinged upon Kate Blanchett and her great performance. The same thing, I think, is the instance of here. A great screenplay, a great director, but so much has to do with that lead performance and taking us through this truly emotional roller coaster and journey of hope and optimism and then joy and then love and then deep sadness and then trauma and then hope again and then completely being crushed and then despair and then maybe hope at the end uh there's a, a great ending i think where it's actually it's a great script moment but it's not a great dialogue moment so it's not a wordy moment as a matter of fact is it's just a brilliant visual uh understanding of i think the themes uh, of the film in particular and it indicates so much of Chang Dong's ability to, like I mentioned earlier, not have a distinct visual flair, but still have a, a strong understanding of cinema and of having that feeling of he knows when the revelation starts and he knows when to kind of give it to you and the beats of the story are so beautifully played. And the script is such a strength of the film and the story is such a, the great strength of the film, which is why I think it still is kind of a high recommend and an easy recommend for a lot of people, even if you don't watch a lot of um, Asian cinema or international cinema, because it's such an engaging humanist story in that it's so well structured too, like a, a Pixar movie or uh, sometimes detective movies where you kind of put the, together the case just as the main character is putting it together. And you get that great feeling of, oh, this is what this means. Oh. And then you kind of put it together. In a way, Li Chang Dong, the, the revelations throughout the movie are in, have a sort of similar fashion, even something to the ending, where you're watching it and then you kind of put it together like, oh, right, that's what he's trying to say with this. He's got something to say. He's got something on his mind. This is an easy kind of simplistic but perfect visual way of expressing that. And it can be an emotionally <laughs> devastating movie at times, but I also think uh, it's one of the most poignant um, depictions of grief, coping with that, how and where to find community, and what you can do to kind of bear the harshness of life. It's an excellent film that I think indicates that when it comes to Asian cinema, there is more than Kurosawa. But that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and this week's episode on Secret Sunshine. Next week, I think I'm going to discuss Yi Nen Dao, who is a Chinese filmmaker who's making some great noirs, another kind of a modern filmmaker who's made less movies than someone like Li Chang Dong, and I think could be the next, you know, great a a Asian director. I've been really excited by some of his films and I can't wait to discuss those with you. So in advance, maybe you can check out some of his films. Not exactly sure which one I'm going to pick. Maybe it's Black Coal Thin Ice. That's kind of the leading contender right now, but uh, we'll have to see when that video comes around. But that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, stay tuned.